We asked Robbie Dupree about the similarities between his song Steal Away from 1980 and the Doobie Brothers' What a Fool Believes from the year before. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Well, this is an old story, and let's remember Michael McDonald and Kenny Loggins, who wrote What a Fool Believes for the Doobie Brothers, never sued Robbie Dupree over Steal Away, his number six hit on the Billboard charts. There have been other songs that have a similar groove, like He's So Shy by the Pointer Sisters and You Belong to Me by Carly Simon. The Doobie Brothers' What a Fool Believes was released January 1979 and Steal Away from Robbie Dupree, April 1980. It was Robbie Dupree's biggest hit, and we asked him that old question. When, when Steal Away came out and people were comparing it to Michael McDonald's What a Fool Believes, uh, how did you react to that when people said things like that? Well, for me, there's a figure that became kind of like a quintessential figure in music for a couple of three years or whatever else it was. And it didn't start with What a Fool Believes. It started with a George Duke song, and there were lots of songs that used that Dun, 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 that kind of vibe. Even Captain and Tennille, Love Will Keep Us Together. I mean, there were all kinds of, it just was a lick. And I think people connected with that. What can you say? You know, you can't, you don't want to defend yourself about it because it seems like the more you protest, the more. What I can say is lyrically, topically, melodically, musically, theirs was a very sophisticated presentation of a song and mine was much more simplistic and it had nothing to do with that on any melodic or lyric level at all but you know i don't want to defend it 40 years later or anything it was it is what it is and history has proven that it's still a very uh it's a classic in itself so i that's all i mean i i know that um that was the thing for a while i kind of i think it helped Keep, to keep the publicity going about the song in the long run. And of course, it's, it's bothersome because you have to deal with it. You know, it's a question that comes up and you always have to find some answer for it, you know, without seeming like pissed off about it. But, um, you know, it passed and it was just what it was. You know, if you really listen to the two songs together, it would be uh, very hard to think that they're really you know, the same kind of song. Has, does it have that similar lick in it? Yeah, it does. But I can also point to, you know, it was an influential song and influential songs leak over into um, other people's writing. Um, by the way, I did not write the music to that song. I wrote the lyrics and the melody, but you're the, on the point, so you have to deal with all of the stuff, you know, that comes to it. So whatever happened to Robbie Dupree? Well, he's still around playing music that sometimes he's more proud of than the early stuff. The thing is, he's tried to become a deeper songwriter without having record companies look over his shoulder. Sure, most people want to hear the hits, but he's enjoying a life where he can perform and write and record whatever he wants. But what happened after having two hits, Steal Away and Hot Rod Hearts, two strong albums in the beginning. They don't tell me anything. Uh, the reality of it is different. I mean, you know, it all depends on what people want to hear. I mean, do you want to hear the true story or do you want to hear the standard story um, about what happened? And not just to me, but to a lot of people. And the true story of what happened was everything was going fine. And all of a sudden there was a... Uh, some kind of an investigation into the independent promotion business and radio. And it affected the Warner group. And I was in the Warner group on Electra records and they pulled all of the independent promotion money. And a lot of records went down the drain with that. And mine was one of those. And, um, that's the fact. Wow. Other people, say, other people say, Oh, music changed and all that. Yeah. But I mean, I was, I was on a roll and this is just what happened. You know, um, lucky that uh, I was um, there and had all the success I did have. But it leaves music and it goes into another phase at that point. And so that's what happened. We'll have more from Robbie Dupree coming up next Friday. I noticed a lot of you have been buying t-shirts. Thank you so much. It helps us improve this channel. We're buying some new mics right now and some good lighting. We have a few different spots in our studio where we're going to start doing different videos. For a few of our other channels, we have Nail Sheet, which is all about entertainment in general. Rock History Canada for Canadian artists that maybe an audience outside Canada might not know. But if you're from Canada, you will know some of these artists. Like the Brian Adams and the 
Backman Turn Rover Drives, they'll go on this channel because, of course, they're well-known outside the U.S. But there is a plethora of artists that did really good in Canada that did not do that well in the U.S. that we will not put on this channel. We'll put on the Canadian channel. And remember, Rock History Book, which is all about top tens and going through albums song by song. There'll be links in the description of this video where you can subscribe to all those. More from Robbie Dupree next Friday. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you comment on our videos. Subscribe to our channel and share our videos. This is Rock History Music.